A is for Andy, B is for Barry, C is for Chaz, D is for Dino, Hello. E is for Edith, A Hello. is for Alan, H is for Holly, J is for Janet, K is for Ken, F is for Father, L is for Laurie, M is for Michael, K is for Kerry, M is for Mike, G is for Grandmother, V is for Vincent, R is for Robin, M is for Mum, N is for Nigel, R is for Reuben, S is for Steve, N is for Nige. I last saw him on the Boxing Day of the Asian Tsunami. He was at his sister's, on a drip, had a colostomy and looked weak. I knew he was dying, but didn't want to assimilate this fact. He was my mate. On return from the prison of war camp, he was totally emaciated and broken. His wife had also had a child in his absence, so there he sat, ashen-faced, no fun. I get it now. I can't imagine you'd ever really come back from a trip like that. After his death, his parents donated a trophy to the club. A year later, at the club dinner, I won it. He was a true maverick who struggled with authority. Nights out with him were always unhinged, fun and unpredictable. His nursing career saw him go from frontline HIV work in London to the outback of Australia. He was a Bowie freak with serious habits. He also had Bowie tattooed on his ass. She had knitted me a pair of hairy swimming trunks which I was instructed to wear. When you allow for the drag factor, passing punts and riverweed, my survival was nothing short of a fucking miracle. He stepped out from the shower, toweled off and got dressed, drowning himself with aftershave. He turned to us saying, Right lads, I'm off now, all lined up for the perfect screw. I was at home when the phone call came, and I know how tough that gig is. My mum retold how one of the boys was reading Tate's Elegy. I didn't know who Tate was or what an elegy was, but I sensed gravitas. Towards the end, he discovered a love of clay and a magical spark was ignited. Perhaps it should be no surprise that clay, with all its potential to morph, spoke to him. A matter of weeks before his retirement, he died from a heart attack and was robbed of his dream. He'd done his duty to others and was due his turn, but it was cruelly taken. He told me about his new passion, making Byzantine books. He dropped around to my house, but I was out. Two weeks later, his son called me. He had died. Now he sits there, in book form, on my shelf. She cleaned her up, returning some dignity. And as she did so, she spoke the first words we'd heard in ages, and to my knowledge, her last. Simply saying, Thank you, dear in a soft, strained voice. Thirty minutes later, she was gone. Despite some whiskey, I couldn't sleep. 
and I went to get a Saturday Guardian early doors. The man in the shop said, Cheer up, mate, it might never happen. I replied, My father died four hours ago. He got a lot of shit for just being himself. Pissed up towny men in white shirts disliked him and would periodically beat him up just for being different. On news of his terminal illness, I wrote him a letter and told him how much he gave to so many. He called me and thanked me. On reflection, he probably already knew, but he seemed touched. When I knew him, he wore his hair long and plaited. By day he was a postman, by night a musician and socialite. The kids on his round called him Postman Platt, and it still makes me smile every time I think of it. Because she proudly owned her membership of the Communist Party, she was an easy target in secondary school. Several years later, after she stopped being my teacher, I heard she had taken her own life. We were all pitching up to the scout hall one day and were sent away. He just died from a heart attack. We didn't talk about it. People really didn't seem to talk about death in those days. I had left my hometown by the time she was diagnosed with cancer. On news of her death, I did a crap job of reaching out, which I regret. In one of his lines, he stated, I is as brief as writing gets, summarising the limits of language perfectly but what happens to the first person when the first person is no longer with us? When the I of the deceased is no longer an I as an actuality? He really helped me grow from a faux artist chancer into something resembling the real thing. He would sometimes pick me up and give me a lift on the way to college. He was also a big fan of Frank Bruno. Knowing this was his last living project felt kind of important. And when he walked in with a vanguard of student helpers, it felt significant. The last time I saw him was at the opening event. As a child, I lived a monochrome existence dominated by pre-war aesthetics. Theirs was a modern world of colour. It was like stepping into the future. They had lava lamps, colour TV, shop brought cakes, full of ornaments, and a fancy drinks cabinet. I put two and two together and realised he had contracted AIDS. In those days, that was it. Both he and his long-term partner died within a year of one another. Because of her mental health, her symptoms were not taken seriously.